I never liked my first job. I was a systems engineer working on oil rigs, and I was frequently the only woman in the room. And I knew that I am someone who is a people person, love getting into the leadership role, love looking into bigger pictures. But what I do every single day is just working on oil rigs and sitting in front of computers and doing some very boring work. I literally hated my job so much. But not until I figured out how to become a product manager and join the tech industry, I finally found my passion. And within four years, I was able to accelerate my career and became a director of product. By now, I've interviewed over 102,000 candidates on the job market through my director position in tech companies and as well as my coaching program, Product Manager Accelerator. Only after so many rounds of interviews with candidates, I finally found out the top five secrets I wish I knew earlier when I started the product management job hunting journey. I make sure to stay until the end of this video where I share with you the latest shocking AI impact in the interview process. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a direct product featured in Forbes. I've helped thousand people land the dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we talk about tech trends and free product management training. Like and subscribe and watch our new video every Tuesday. Among thousands of people I've interviewed with, the number one biggest mistake I've seen people made is and they dive into the dream company right away. I totally understand many people have really big aspirations, want to join Google, Meta, Apple, NVIDIA, or AI companies, but usually they're so excited, throw themselves into the job market, or they were laid off, they have no choice. And they always go for their dream companies and keep an eye on those positions right away. However, they usually fall flat and the first time go into interview with a dream company and I'm losing the opportunities. And in reality, this failure is very costly because lots of candidates once they fail the dream company and they start to just give up and instead of continuously trying for the right position for them. I wish when I started my product management career, someone told me earlier that I should just go out, interview and practice with small medium companies first and gradually walk up to my dream company. And it's just like teaching baby how to walk. And when your baby start crying and the first step trying to walk, do you want them, do you want the baby to fall off the stairs? Or do you want the baby to hold the wall and gradually walk and finally make the first step? And of course, and whenever baby fell and fell multiple times, you will, you will never give up. You always encourage your baby to continue trying, but trying with a little bit of assistance until the baby was able to crawl upstairs and walking and start running. Product management, same thing at the product management job interview right now. You must go out interview with small medium companies first, given today's economy, and then gradually interview with it, which could be Google or Apple. For example, my very first interview I had fresh out of school was Apple. I was so smart being able to use the networking strategies to learn interview opportunities at Apple by crashing the MIT career fair. Even at the time, I was just a PhD student from Boston University. So I went to the on-campus interview at MIT to interview with Apple. At the time, I was on cloud nine, so excited, and then interview with Apple. Yes, I prepared for two days, but I still wasn't able to land job offer. It was because I lack of practice and lack of experience and directly went to my dream company, Apple. So therefore, if I could start over again, I'm going to have a roadmap of interview target company, what company I need to work with first, and eventually hit my final goal, which is Apple. I also know lots of people like to complain about the economy. And to be frank, when I land my very first job, it was during 2008 recession. It was extremely stressful and I had no experience, but I was still able to land a job offer with four months. And when I look into those typical mistakes among the 1,200 candidates, for example, when I went out to interview for director positions, I interviewed with Waymo. I was so excited, gave me a really easy question. And at Waymo, the self-driving car company, they asked me, how would you design the intersection to make it really safe for the self-driving car to drive through. At the time, I was group product manager for smart cities and literally launched the very first AI-empowered smart cities product, which received the Mayor's Best Practice Award. And I immediately dove into the design details of intersections and the vehicle to infrastructure conversation and all the technical design of the souped up intersections that is able to communicate with self-driving cars. However, what hiring managers really want to hear is what's my thinking process 
process and my thought process to approach these challenging questions to lead to the final design solution. And that gave me one of the biggest lessons ever learned during the interview. Knowing how to do the job is very different from how whether you know how to pass the interviews. Even if I had all the skill set necessary to create to make self driving car pretty safe based on my past uh, award-winning AI product experience, but I still didn't know what to say during the interview and what hiring manager want to hear. But luckily, after I learned these mistakes, I was able to organize different kind of framework to answer those very challenging questions. Now I have students using the same framework and working for self drummy car company and the fan company. That's best way to really redeem myself because the failure I had like eight years ago. Besides the candidate love to jump into the uh, solutions, they also make lots of mistakes not knowing what kind of framework to use. Because when interviewer asks you questions such as what the success metrics of YouTube versus design a wood bag for blind people, and what if battery life went up by 10 times more, what would you do? All those different type of questions, you need to use very different framework to nail those interview. Or your entire 45 minutes interview conversation is going to go off tangent and completely waste time between you and the interviewer and eventually fail those interviews. And guess what? Dr. Nancy Lee, I did the second PhD on interview framework. And I published all my interview framework in this video where I talk about the top six must ask and most difficult interview questions for product managers. Make sure to check out this video right here. I'm also going to link it in the description of this video. When you go out for those product management interviews and interview frequently give you very open ended questions. And how would you know uh, to understand what the intent of the questions and what kind of framework you should use. So I created a separate cheat sheet where she was the top 10 clarifying questions you should ask during a product management interview. Now feel free to go to this website and download the top 10 clarifying questions. I'm also going to link it in the description of this video. Even if some of you guys were able to land the job interviews, however, how you practice and do mock interviews, especially for those product design, product management interview questions, it makes a day and night difference. And because frequently those product case interview questions last for 45 minutes and each mock interview lasts forever, and if you don't know how to use your time effectively, you end up wasting lots of time without making rapid progress. And I frequently discovered those candidates out there, they didn't practice enough by themselves and didn't predict the interview questions. Instead, they just blindly practice to try to increase the number of mock interviews but without thinking strategically and work smart. Actually, it's a very smart way for you to predict what kind of interview questions interviewer gonna ask you, which is based on the profile of the people who is going to interview you and also based on the job description. And after you're able to predict those kind of job interviews, you should focus on practicing yourself and create those sample answers yourself and focus on your weakness by trying to solve the case, solve the problem, and before you go out to do mock interviews. And here, I really want to emphasize, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do mock interviews. And actually, inside PM Accelerator, I recommend our students to do at least 20 different kind of product mock interviews. However, I always tell them that it's important for you to do many different cases, solve those cases on your own, and really think hard what's the correct answer before you even go out to, do, uh, to blindly just do mock interviews. And there's another important trick. You can actually use sticky notes around your computers to put all different framework and predict the answers you have prepared around the screen of the computer so that you, as the interviewer, is able to find all the tips during the interviews, but the interviewer who is, in this case, doing virtual remote interviews, not able to see all your sticky notes. If you find all the tips useful in this video, make sure to like this video and let's continue. Once you use the strategy very efficiently, you're able to save so much time. For example, our student Alex Tan recently joined Google. He only did two mock interviews with other people. The rest of the time, he was trying to really laser focus on predicting the interview questions and the practicing on his own to figure out what's the best methodology to solve those product design, product strategy, product metrics interviews for the specific role he's going to interview for at Google. That's how he was able to land his product manager job offer at Google. Google in this competitive job market. So inside the Product Manager Accelerator, I also help our students to predict the type of interview questions to be asked during the specific job interviews. And I also even predict the final round interview at Meta, which helped another student, my Zhi Yang, and join Meta. This is like the most efficient and lots of candidates didn't work on to work smart during the interview process. Another shocking news I wish I knew earlier was the wrong 
leveling. If you go for job interviews, you will realize why somebody land a job offer at Meta L7 getting paid $800,000 per year, but you also have the same year's experience and you can only land a job offer with these 300k jobs out there. And there's a huge discrepancy between what you land and years of experience. And some of you guys may, may be also confused. Should I apply for APM roles when I transition into PM or should I directly apply for PM job offer or maybe go for the senior PM job title? So when you go out for job interviews, before you even get started, you must have a career planning to understand what level you should be applying for and that matches the right salary expectations and right type of company you should join so that you're not going to get blindly rejected just because you apply to the wrong level. You might be overqualified or even underqualified for some roles out there. For example, if you're a fresh graduate with less than two years experience, you should apply for APM role. If you have more, more than two years experience out of college, you, sh you should apply for product management role directly. I had a detailed breakdown videos regarding a social product manager job offer in Google and other tier one companies. Feel free to check out this video right here. I'm also going to put it in the description of this video. Another way to figure out what you're right leveling is based on whether you know how to talk about your transferable skills into the new job you're gonna work in. For example, if you transition into product management or you want to change industry, it's quite critical you understand how much your past experience is the same or similar as the future job responsibilities you will be working in. And even people ask you the same kind of interview questions, they expect very different answer based on different levels. And for example, if you ask the same question, how school to a kid? My son right now is three years old. His answer to how school is very simple, just good or smile or not able to really describe what exactly happened that day. And when you ask a teenager, the teenager, you expect the teenager to tell you the highlight of the day, what happened in the school was the most important lesson learned they had that day. Or maybe the teenager felt like you're not cool enough. The teenager decide to not to talk to you as, at all as a parent. Same thing as a job interview. When people ask you the same question, tell me about yourself. Or tell me a time from when you turn a product from concept to execution. Depends on your past years of experience and level you want to hit. Your answer should be completely different. And your scope of work, impact, skills, the answers will be 100% different even if it's the same interview questions. I also discovered some shocking news about AI disruption in the interview process. More and more of my students go out to do product management interviews. They were asked to do those kind of AI interview. They were required to record themselves through a video and answer the questions and send back to the systems and system is going to use AI to screen the answer. So what if those kind of AI systems are also biased against different type of candidate out there? It's going to be a big disaster in the entire product management uh, space and maybe the entire tech space as well. So feel free to DM me on LinkedIn and tell me about your ideas as well. You can check out more on our LinkedIn post right here. So in order to really solve this AI interview bias, I took on big challenge. I decided to reach out to those AI interview companies and pretend I'm the hybrid manager and I tell them product manager accelerator is going to use your AI software to interview our candidate and see how they set up the algorithm and I'm going to explore and figure out what kind of algorithms they're putting in the AI interviews and report back to you guys in my future uh, videos and I'm also going to break down the discoveries through my newsletter as well. Make sure, make sure to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to our newsletter so that you will be notified once I finish my research about AI interview bias and algorithm. I'm going to link the newsletter in the description of this video. If you are actively preparing for your product management interview, you must watch the top six most asked but hardest interview questions for product managers in this video right here. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PMXCertor.io. Like and subscribe. Check out our next video right here.